God. Well, they was up here Wednesday night. They were practicing, and I had been uh, working on my uh, sermon for this morning already. And and uh, that song, Pride's Worth Fighting For, it, it went right along with what I was going to speak about. So I told them, I said, I want y'all to do this song. So I had them practice it Wednesday night. And then uh, they talked to Paul Paul, and he wanted to do goodness of God. So I told Brittany this morning, I said, I said, uh, I said, I want y'all to get up there and do that prize worth fighting for. Right. <laughs> and then they got up here and done that, and then they said Paul Paul told them they couldn't get out of doing the other one too. So, but uh, you know, you always come across these confirmations and th and stuff about what you're studying on and things like that. And uh, you know, yesterday at the funeral. Uh, he got up there and when he was talking, he was talking about running the race and how Uncle Billy was, had run the race and everything. That was all just confirmation of what I've been studying on all week long. And uh, I'm going to go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And I'm going to start with verse 24. says, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain, and every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. And you know, this race that we're in it's not a race like in, like a race that anybody would ever think of as a race because you're not competing for first place this is not a race where you if you don't come in first place you've lost you know it's a different kind of race and uh, basically this race either you win or you lose there's no first, no second, no third place. It's either you win or you lose. And I like this kind of race because it means that when that person goes through and they've already won their race, that doesn't mean that it's over for me. That means I still have a chance. <clears throat> and uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7, it says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. The faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them that also that love his appearing. So, you know, this tells us that we're all going to receive it. All who finish the race. All who have stayed in and fought. <clears throat> and you know, um, Paul tells us some important things that we need to run the race to receive the prize. The prize is worth fighting for. You know, so many times people, they... They say, well, you know what? It just seems like it's not worth it. You know, it just seems like it's not worth it. But with God, the prize is always worth it. And in running this race, growth matters. We have to push forward and continue to grow. We can't look back because it will cause us to stumble. You know, when you're running a race, if you're running in a foot race, and you turn your head behind you and you look behind you to see who's up close to you, what happens? 
You're liable to trip on that rock in that gravel road, or you're liable to stumble over your own feet, you know, by turning around and looking backwards. Uh, Philippians chapter 3, verse 12, it says, Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which were behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press towards the mark, for the prize of the high calling shall reveal even this unto you. Amen. So it tells us, you can't look behind you, you have to grow, you have to continue moving forward. You know, and this is something that I struggled with when I first became a Christian, because when I became a Christian, I was happy where I was at. You know, at that point, I was happy where I was at. I didn't really, I didn't want to grow. I wanted to stay where I was at. Because growth means getting out of your comfort zone. And that was one thing that I really didn't want to do. And so, like I said, this is something that I had trouble with. But the one thing that I found out is no matter how much you don't want to grow, you're going to, whether you like it or not. You know, when you become a Christian and you continue to be a Christian, God is going to push you. God is going to send people to push you. God is going to make sure that you grow, make sure that you reach the full potential that you have. Another thing I think about running the race is people matter. The people you meet along the way, the ones that you can help, and the ones that also help you along the way, they all matter. You know, Paul, he was, he was thankful for people. It says um, in Romans chapter 1, verse 8, it says, First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you. For your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. <clears throat> and he also says in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 16, it says, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. You know, Paul, he was thankful for people. And that's, that's all an important part of running the race, is being thankful for people because they matter. Because there's always those people that you come across that you can help. But not only people that you can help, there's also people that come along and help you along the way. And it's very important that we understand how much people matter. You know, and after the funeral, I got to thinking about it last night. You know, it, it reminds me of how Uncle Bill was. You know, he was, he thought that everybody mattered. And that's the way we all should think. He had a soft spot for drug addicts. And he had a soft spot for alcoholics. Yes. Because he had been there. Because he knew the things that they were going through. So he had a soft spot for them. And he thought they mattered. Many times I've seen Uncle Billy walked down the street and he would just talk to this random person on the side of the road. You know, uh, I'd be with him or whatever sometimes and, and he would just stop and he, I, I was with him one time, he pulled over on the side of the road, somebody standing on the sidewalk and just started talking to him, got out of the truck and started talking to him. And, you know, that seemed like something that I wouldn't necessarily do, you know, but he did it because that person mattered to him, you know, because all people mattered. And we see, like, through Uncle Bill, how he understands that all people matter because, because he went to the jailhouse every Sunday and he preached to prisoners. So he wanted the prisoners to understand that they matter. You know, he wanted them to know that they matter. I don't think jailhouse ministry is for me. I'm not saying I would never go to the jailhouse and talk to somebody, but I, I don't think it's for me. But one thing that we have to understand is 
they matter. You know, everybody matters. And that's all part of the race that we're running. The people that we come in contact with, the, the, the lives that we may be able to change, and the lives that change us. Another thing that matters in the race that we're running is obedience. This is one thing that a lot of people, they have a lot of trouble with, you know, because when you're young, you, you don't want to be obedient to your parents. When you get older, you still don't want to be obedient to your parents. And even after that, sometimes we don't want to be obedient to God. You know, sometimes, even if you're a Christian, sometimes you, you question God and you say, well, God, why do you want me to do this? But we shouldn't ask God why He wants us to do this. We should be obedient and do it. But you know, it, it's just the way we are. But in the end, the important thing is as long as you realize the importance of being obedient. You know, in, in Acts chapter 20, and verse, starting with verse 17, it says, And from Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church, and when they were come to him, he said unto them, You know from the first day that I came into Asia, after what manner I have been with you all seasons, serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with many tears and temptations, which befell me by the lying and weight of the Jews, and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And now behold, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, save that the Holy Ghost witnesses in every city, saying, that bounds and afflictions abide me, but none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received in the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. And know, and now behold, I know that ye all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, so I see my face no more. You know, Paul, he knew that his time was coming to an end. He knew that his race was going to be over soon. And so he told these people, he said, he said, I held nothing back. He said, I told you everything that I know to tell you. I've taught you everything that I know. He said, I've told you the way you should do I told you the things you should do. He said, I, you know, we went from house to house. We testified to people. He said, I want you to continue on with these things. Amen. You know, Paul, he wanted these people to continue. He wanted them. And, and again, back here where it says unto the Jew and also to the Greeks. Right. That means unto all people. Amen. That means there's no special people. That is to receive the word of God. There is no special set aside people to receive the word of God. All people. That's sinners. That's Christians. That's people in jail. That's business workers in a building. Everybody. All people are to receive the gospel of God. You know, at this time when, when Paul was writing this, he didn't know for sure what was going to happen, you know, when he got to where he was going. He didn't know what they was going to do to him. But he knew he was still going to go. He was still going to go and finish his race. He was going to finish his ministry. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 14, it says, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Jesus Christ. You know, sometimes we get beat down and we feel as though we can't go anymore. But we have to have the same mindset that Paul had. 
You know, we have to continue. We have to go. No matter what we think may happen, we have to continue to finish the race, to continue to finish our ministry. And the last scripture I'm going to read is Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 10. It says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. You know, so no matter what we go through, no matter the things that we think may be ahead, God is going to be our strength. Amen. He's going to always be there to strengthen us, to push us forward, to move us forward, to continue to make us grow. You know, no matter what comes ahead, He's always going to be there to strengthen us. You know, and, uh, you know, being at the funeral yesterday, it's, you know, funerals are always difficult, you know. They're always difficult. And, and those people, you know, when they pass on, they, they don't want you, they know you're going to mourn them, but we can always take comfort in knowing that they're going to a better place. Knowing that, you know, Uncle Billy's mind was restored to him. Yes. And so, uh, I just got to thinking about that a lot, about how Uncle Billy always thought everybody mattered. You know, he, he had a smile on his face. He didn't care if there was a guy sitting on the side of the street chugging a bottle of booze. He would stop and talk to him. You know, it didn't matter to him what kind of response he got from him. He was going to stop and talk to him. You know, it didn't scare him what kind of response they may give him. He didn't care. You know, and that's how we need to be. We need to push forward. And we need to understand that all people matter. And we need to understand how important it is to be obedient to God, to follow yeah. God's word, to move forward in what God wants us to do. We have to push forward. We can't look back. You can't run a race by looking behind you worried about who's close to you. And like I said, this is the kind of race that we're running. It doesn't matter who's close up behind you or not. The race that we're running doesn't matter whether you come in first or second or whether you're the 5,000th one to cross the line, it doesn't matter what position you come in as long as you finish. Because yeah. like I said, the, the winners of this race, there's either winners or losers. There's no first, second, and third place. All that matters is that you finish. Yeah. Okay.